All right, guys, so today we're going to look at Lesson 6, Session 4, pages 125 through 128. So let's look at our example. What is the least common multiple of 5, 8, and 10? So we've listed our multiples of 5, our multiples of 8, and our multiples of 10. Do we have a 10 in common? No. Do we have a 20 in common? No. Do we have a 30 in common? No. Do we have a 40 in common with all three? Yes. So our least common multiple of 5, 8, and 10 is 40. Now right, let's start with number one. Solve the puzzle from the clues. Show your work. We are two whole numbers less than or equal to 12. Our least common multiple is 36, and our greatest common factor is 1. What two whole numbers are we? So because the greatest common factor of the two numbers is 1, the least common multiple is the product of the two numbers. The factor pairs of 36 are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. Of these pairs, only 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6, and 9 and 12 have both numbers less than or equal to 12. Of these three pairs, only 4 and 9 have a greatest common factor of 1. So the solution to the puzzle is 4 and 9. Number 2. Chantel has 45 green balloons and 54 purple balloons to make into bunches for a school celebration. She wants each bunch to have the same number of each color balloon. What is the greatest number of bunches Chantel can make if she wants to use all of her balloons? How many purple balloons will she put in each bunch? Show your work. So greatest tells me I'm going to use greatest common factor. Factors of 45... We have 1 and 45, 3 and 15, 5 and 9. Factors of 54. 1 and 54, 2 and 27, 3 and 18, 6 and 9. Do we have a 54 in common? No. Do we have a 27 in common? No. Do we have an 18 in common? No. Do we have a 9 in common? Yep. Do we have a 6 in common? No. Do we have a 3 in common? Yes. 2? Nope. 1? Yes. So our factors are 1, 3, and 9. So the greatest common factor is 9. So the greatest number of bunches she can make is 9 bunches. Now, if we take 54, which is the number of purple balloons, and we divide it by 9. So 54 divided by 9, we know that 9 times 6 gives me 54. So that would mean 6 purple balloons in each bunch. We have 9 bunches. Alright, number 3, what is the least common multiple of 5 and 10? Let's list our multiples of 5. 5, that's not 8. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Alright, do we have a multiple of 10? Yep. Alright, so you should have chose C. Alyssa chose B. 5 as the correct answer. How might she have gotten that answer? So, Alyssa probably found the greatest common factor of 5 and 35 instead of the least common multiple of 5 and 35. Alright. Number four, Ignacio buys three types of fish. He buys 12 guppies, nine mollies, and 15 swordtails. He plans to divide the fish between more than one fish tank. He wants to put the same number of each type of fish into each tank. How many tanks should he use? How many of each type of fish will be in each tank? Show your work. Okay, so we need to find 
the greatest number in each fish tank. So, we need to find the greatest common factor of 12, 9, and 15. Well, factors of 12. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Factors of 9. 1 and 9, 3 and 3. Factors of 15. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Alright, the only common factor of 12, 9, and 15 that is greater than 1 is 3. So 3 is our greatest common factor. Alright, so that means 3 tanks. 12 was the number of guppies, 9 was the number of mollies, and 15 is the number of sword tails. So, if we have 3 fish tanks, we can put 4 guppies... Three um, mollies and five sword tails. Number five, the greatest common factor of 20 and another number is four. Which of these could be the other number? Well, when we looked at the greatest common factor on the previous worksheet, we said that the greatest common factor cannot be greater than that number. So, the greatest common factor of 20 and another number is 4. Well, 80 is greater than 20. Now, if we find the greatest common factor of 20 and 20, the greatest common factor is going to be 20. Alright, what about 10? Well, 4 is not a factor of 10. So, the only two that we have that our options are 4 and 8. Alright, number 6. Enos finds the greatest common factor and the least common multiple of 10 and 12. She then subtracts to find the difference between the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. What is the difference? Well, first we need to find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple of 10 and 12. So I have the multiples of 10 and 12 listed here. So do we have a 12 in common? No. Do we have a 24 in common? No. Do we have a 36 in common? No. 48? No. 60? Yes. So 60 is our least common multiple. Now, I also have our factors of 10 and 12. Factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Do we have a 12 in common? No. Do we have a 6 in common? No. Do we have a 4 in common? No. Do we have a 3 in common? No. Do we have a 2 in common? Yes. Do we have a 1 in common? Yes. So our common factors are 1 and 2, which would make our greatest common factor 2. So then it said she subtracts to find the difference between the greatest common factor and the least common multiple. So 60 minus 2 gives me 50. So what's the difference? 58. Number 7. Tell whether each statement about 20 and 30 is true or false. The greatest common factor of 20 and 30 is 5. Well, let's find the greatest common factor. We have our factors written here. Do we have a 20 in common? No. Do we have a 10 in common? Yes. Well, 10 is greater than 5. So that would mean that this one would be false. What about B? 10 is a common multiple. 10 is not a multiple of 20 or 30. It is a factor. So that would be false. The least common multiple is 60. Well, let's look at our multiples. Is 30 a common multiple? No. Is 60 a common multiple? Yes. 60 is our least common multiple. So that one would be true. What about D? 2 is a common factor. Well, we have 2 as a factor of 20 and 2 as a factor of 30, so that would also be true. Right, 8A. Find the greatest common factor of 8 and 12. Show that 8 twelfths equals 2 thirds by dividing the numerator and denominator of 8 twelfths by the greatest common factor. Well, factors of 8, 
factors of 12. Factors of 8 would be 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Factors of 12 would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, which gives me the greatest common factor of 4. Now, 8 divided by 4, so how many times can 4 go into 8? Be 2. 4 can go into 12 three times. So all we did was simplify our fraction from 8 twelfths to 2 thirds. Alright, so we're also going to show how to add the fractions 1 eighth and 1 twelfth by using the least common multiple of 8 and 12. So let's list our multiples of 8 and our multiples of 12. So multiples of 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, multiples of 12, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. All right, do we have a 12 in common? No. Do we have a 24 in common? Yes. So I'm going to use the least common multiple of 8 and 12, which we said was 24. So what do I do to 8 to get 24? Well, I multiply it by 3. What do I do the bottom? Got to do the top. 1 times 3 is 3. And then we got to have the same denominator. So what do I do to 12 to get 24? Multiply by 2. What do I do the bottom? Got to do the top. 1 times 2 is 2. So now if I have 3 24ths and 2 24ths, how many 24ths do I have? Five twenty-fourths. Right, and the last problem, which is our math journal, right? Two different whole numbers that have six as the greatest common factor. Explain how you found your two numbers, then find the least common multiple of your numbers. So I multiplied by two number. I multiplied six by two numbers that do not have any common factors other than one. So 12 equals 6 times 2, and 18 equals 6 times 3. The least common multiple of 12 and 18 is 6 times 2 times 3, which is 36. So two different whole numbers that have 6 as their greatest common factor would be 12 and 18. And that's the end of pages 125 through 128.